right, it's time to talk about Article 250, grounding and bonding. Now, over the last several code cycles, honestly, there hasn't been that much to talk about in Article 250 as it relates to code changes. You know, they rewrote Article 250 for the 1999 code, and look, I'm not trying to blow smoke. They, they did a great job. I mean, they really did. If you look at the, do yourself a favor, if you have a 1996 NEC, grab it and look at Article 250. It was chaos and there's actually a lot of stuff that was just wrong. In 1999 they reorganized it, redid it, started from scratch and they killed it. They did a fantastic job. They finished that process in 2008 by changing uh, you know shall be grounded to shall be connected to an equipment grounding conductor and, and really making some nice clarifications and really shoring up the requirements of Article 250. I gotta be honest ever since the 2008 code, there's not a lot to talk about in Article 250 when it comes to changes. So they did a few things here in the 2023 code, and, and we'll talk about them, but nothing that's really going to change your life. Let's start with 250.6 objectionable current. I like what they did here. The types of currents that are not considered objectionable were clarified. Okay, every three years, like clockwork, somebody wants to define the term objectionable current. And, and I get that because the code says you can't have objectionable current, but it doesn't tell you what that is. <laughs> okay, well, uh, electrical equipment and systems must be installed in a way that prevents objectionable current. That's the rule. Now, look, I'm not going to try to define it. But I will say this, objectionable current is basically neutral current flowing on green wires and metal objects. Okay, that's really what objectionable current is. So here you have 9.5 amps on the equipment grounding conductor. That is objectionable current, no question about it. If I were to show you the other two photographs that were part of this installation, the first photograph shows the same ammeter around the hot conductor, and it shows 19 amps. And then the second picture shows 10 amps on the neutral, 9 amps on the equipment ground. Absolutely, no doubt, objectionable current code violation. Now, why would I have 19 amps on the black, 10 on the white, 9 on the equipment ground? Well, remember, Kirchhoff's law says that the amount of current leaving the power supply and the amount of current returning to the power supply are always the same. If 10 amps leaves, 10 amps goes back, right? And it takes every path available. So... If you have the hot conductor with 19 amps, hopefully, if it's done correctly, those 19 amps should return on the neutral. But if I have the neutral and equipment grounding conductors tied together at the service disconnect, as required, and I also tie the neutral and equipment grounding conductors together downstream of the service disconnect, which is a violation, then the neutral and ground are in parallel with each other. So yeah, if I have 19 amps on the hot, about half of that current is going to go back on the neutral, and the other half is going to go back on the equipment grounding conductor. That's a violation of this section. That's the type of objectionable current that you're not allowed to have. Okay, so 250.6a says you're not allowed to have objectionable current. 250.6b says if you have objectionable current, you need to disconnect equipment grounding conductors or disconnect you know the parallel paths and different things. But it also says you're not allowed to just disconnect everything. You have to still ensure that the installation is safe. Now 250.6 tells us what uh, what currents are not considered objectionable. Current from a ground fault is not considered objectionable. Take a look at the picture here. Here we energized this metal faceplate with a hot conductor and the arcing, the welding on that thing is actually evidence of a code compliant installation. When they had that ground fault, hundreds or maybe thousands of amps of current flowed on the equipment grounding conductor and opened the circuit breaker. The fact that you can see that arc is actually proof that we had a low impedance fault current path in order to trip the breaker and remove that dangerous voltage. That type of current that occurs during a ground fault, that's not objectionable current. That current on the equipment ground is the equipment grounding conductor doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is trip breakers and open fuses. So that's not considered objectionable current. And neither is any current from any connection that's required by Article 250. All right. If you have underground metal water pipe going to your house, <laughs> try this sometime. Go down in your basement or wherever your water pipe comes in and take your ammeter, take your amp clamp and clamp it around the pipe or clamp it around the grounding electrode conductor. 
uh, you might be surprised, but you're going to have some current on that. And the reason you're going to have current on that conductor and on that metal cop that copper pipe is because your copper pipe is in parallel with the utility neutral. All right, you have to connect your neutral conductor and your copper pipe together at the service disconnect, right? Ultimately, well, guess what? So does your neighbor, and so do all your neighbors. And if you have copper pipe feeding your house, it's likely that everybody in your whole neighborhood does as well. So all of those copper pipes are all in parallel with the utility neutral conductor. Now, depending on the installation, your utility may have installed a concentric aluminum neutral conductor. And boy, if they did, that's a problem because your utility neutral conductor might be in the middle of corroding away to about nothing. I, I got news for you. That copper water pipe, that is your neutral, <laughs> okay? Your, your, your neutral for your service might be in very bad shape. So that copper water pipe might actually be your neutral conductor. So if you put your clamp on that thing, you're gonna see some current and that's okay. That's not unexpected, that's not unsafe. That's just the way we do things in the United States. It's unavoidable. We wanna to connect to the copper water pipe because it is a very good grounding electrode conductor or a very good grounding electrode. But we also recognize that it's in, in parallel with the utility neutral. If you ever talk to a plumber that does work on the line side of the house, right, over by the water meter, uh, plumbers that have been playing this game for a while, a lot of them carry jumper cables. And they, they do that to jumper cable around the water meter so that they can remove the water meter without opening the neutral because they've been shot from that. So, yeah, your water pipe has current on it, folks. It, it does. You know, is that a problem? Is it unsafe? Is it a code violation? No, that is not considered objectionable current. And that's a clarification that they made here in the 2023 version of the code. Uh, the other spots where you would see a neutral current on metal things from required connections would be like if you have a commercial installation and you've got rigid metal conduit going up and you hit a CT enclosure and then you've got EMT maybe going from the CT enclosure to the service disconnect. All of that metal stuff is all in parallel with the utility neutral, right? There's no avoiding that. Is that a code violation? No, it, it's really, it, it's not unsafe, it's not a violation, it's not objectionable current. It, it's just current that's required to be there due to, due to the way we do things here in the United States. So hopefully the clarification helps you out. 250.6, objectionable current. We'll see you on the next video.